uh, class this morning is found in Romans chapter 13, if you would like to turn there. <clears throat> and I anticipate some uh, good discussion uh, this morning as we walk, uh, walk about uh, Zion. <clears throat> I like the, David's words in, uh, in the Psalms. He said, walk, walk about Zion and mark, mark her towers and tell her, her uh, bulwarks. That is, become, become familiar with uh, the city of God and with uh, uh, the place of, of God's habitation. And that, that's what we're doing when we, uh, when we meditate on the scriptures and we, uh, we discuss the, the things of God as revealed to us uh, in the scriptures. It's, it's like we're, we're walking around in, in, in the truth. These are spiritual places. We're not just pretending to, uh, to walk around and, and see things. It's not just an imagination. You have to have faith to perceive these places. In fact, these places are more real than the place than the, the the physical places because the physical is going to be shaken and it's going to come down it's going to be folded up <clears throat> like a scroll uh, but these uh, these spiritual places that we've been uh, that we've come to like we've come to Mount Zion that that's where that's what we're looking at uh, th these places will never be shaken and so we we want to be uh, become uh, familiar uh, we want to be able to navigate in these uh, spiritual places. <clears throat> so Romans chapter 13 and uh, verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the, the armor of light. So I want to talk about knowing, knowing the time. And that it's high time to awake out of sleep. Now, it seems that it's very, very common uh, for in a lot of religious settings for knowing the time to be approached in in this way. It says uh, whether or not it's that these days are the last time. Are we seen? Are we in the end times? And that that phrase carries carries a a, a lot of. Um, of associations with it that that actually cause a lot of people to be fearful. People don't want to hear about the end times that we're that we're living in the end times. Well, I, I got news. John the apostle in his day said, "Now it is the last days." Uh -huh. So if it was the last days in John's time, John the apostle, then certainly we're in the last of the last days now. But see that these kind of considerations don't have to be fearful. Amen. That that's what. That's what salvation is all about. Is that no matter is that we're saved, we're being we're being delivered, we're we're safe. There's a safe place from these these end times. So certainly there is a condition uh, that men should be fearful to be in, and that is not reconciled to God, not accepted in in Christ. Then the end times are fearful times. But for those that are in Christ, these these things can't hurt you. Um, that's not the direction that we're going to take. In, in this lesson when Paul says here <clears throat> that knowing the time that it's he makes a personal application to it knowing the time that it's high time to awake out of sleep yes. and so he, he's he's talking to your heart <laughs> he's talking to my heart it's time for me to awake out of sleep that's what time it is that this is a see this is something that you have to take hold of uh, by, by faith you have to take hold of it yourself by faith that it's high time to awake out of sleep now there's a there's a um, there's a view that we can take on this knowing the time that we can take a very a very high view um, of what is it to know the time so from the highest view that I can think of it's this we are living in the time that there is time because there wasn't always time the Lord has no need of clocks and calendars He's from eternity. He inhabiteth eternity. He created time when he created the world. The only reason for time is because there's a limit. There's a, there's a space in which he in which the world is going going to exist. And so the Lord doesn't have need of time. We have need of time. So the very highest view that, that I can perceive of knowing the time is that we're living in the time where there is time. That there there's a there is a there's a definite there was a definite beginning of this world when God created the heavens and the earth. Brother James mentioned this morning, and that there was evening, there was morning, and there was evening the first day. See, that's when time began. And then there's coming a time 
We read in the book of the Revelation when the angel said, time is no more. We're living in that time. <laughs> when time between the times when time began and time will end. That's a, we need to know that. We need to know the time. that We're, we're living in the time that God is working out uh, salvation. But then we can, we can take one, one click in closer from that from that eternal perspective and we can think of knowing the time as in we're living in the time that Jesus has come to the earth see there was a time before he came and there's a time now after he came there was a time in the earth leading that led up to Jesus appearing in this world and putting away sin and that was that was like the the biggest um, marker on the on the uh, the timeline that existed when Jesus came, go ahead. <clears throat> that statement there in Galatians four has always been a, a, a prime marker for me. The idea of in the fullness of time, yeah. God sent forth His Son. Right. So there, there's a lot of ticks on God's timeline. You know, the giving of the law well, that was a that was a tick on the timeline, and the and the flood. That was a tick on the timeline. A lot happened there, and the the Exodus from uh, Egypt. And the coming of John the Baptist, and David reigning over the people, and there see there's a, there are a lot, but it's like the biggest tick on the timeline is when Jesus came, and he put away sin. He fulfilled everything that came before him. He fulfilled the law and the prophets, and then so now we're living in the day of salvation, and so we can view all of time in these these two categories. There was a time when sin reigned. And now we're living in the time after Jesus came that grace reigns, reigns under righteousness. Death, sin reigned unto death, and grace reigns under righteousness. So we want to be able to, we want to be able to know the time that we're living in the day of salvation, brethren. Where the day that we're living in now is not like the day that Moses lived in. Moses did not, Moses did not have this promise: confess your sins, and he will forgive your sins. Moses didn't have that promise. We do. This is, Jen. Now, this is, this is kind of a fascinating uh, the, the thought here, this matter of time. It's really an accommodation to our salvation. Right. It doesn't, so far as we know, it doesn't exist anywhere else. Right. It's just for, for this particular work of God. And it's as though he has set that up in order that that what he is doing can be perceived more readily. And for us to learn to think after the, the thoughts of God. Because he had, see, he, he does everything for a purpose. God has ordered, the fact the creation testifies to the order of God. He puts things in the in the church, things are to be done decently and in order. So this is this is really the nature of God. It's so that so that every part of what He is doing doesn't get missed in heaven or in earth, and so that we, in our present form, can look at it and and be able to take hold of it and reason upon it, so that we can perceive this is what God is doing and be able to enter into it. It's really a wonderful thing. Whenever we don't have need of it anymore, it'll be done away with. Right. But for us to be creatures that have lived under this economy, see, that's that's strange to the rest of, of God's creation. Right. So time is actually a mercy. Yeah. It, it would be, uh, it, it would add, it would be, uh, add a layer of burden in our mortal frames to not know that the earth had a had a particular time where it began and it will have a has a particular time in which it will end yeah. really it's a real handicap to think that you have time that you always have time those of us who are older know the young those who are young think that they're going to live forever and then nothing's ever going to happen nothing bad's ever going to happen i'll be okay i'll come out on the other side of this because we know that's a fallacy to think that time doesn't end. It just goes on and on and on and on. Right. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a characteristic of unbelief. So here, here's another uh, click in, in closer um, uh, to look at these different times. So 
in the in the broad scope, we see that there, there was a time before Jesus came, there's a time after Jesus came. But even within the time before Jesus came, there were different times. Not all time was was the same. Adam's day was not the same kind of time that David's was. Think about everything David said. David knew about the Lord. He, he had the had the temple, had the had the law. The, the law was a, was a light that, that revealed something about God. It was not as bright as the gospel, but the law revealed something about God. And David was drawn by, by what was revealed. He said, oh, how I love thy law. He said uh, things like, I was glad when they said to me, let us go unto the, to the house of the Lord. And he said, it's, it's, uh, be, to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord is better than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. See, David's day was a different kind of day. It was a different time than Adam's day. And we can make a lot of other comparisons like that. See, Abraham, he heard more about God than Seth and Enoch heard and knew about God. Because God was revealing, he was opening up his purpose over time, over a span of time. Jesus didn't come in Seth's generation. Couldn't have. It was too early. It wasn't the right time. The time had to become full. And so that within that time before Jesus came, there were different times, there were different seasons in which God was, was unfolding his purpose. The same thing can be seen in, the, in this time after Jesus has come. There, are, there have been different times and, and seasons. <clears throat> within the day of salvation, there, there was a time at the beginning that the church was at peace. The church should preach the gospel. People believed every they you know sold uh, lands and houses and had had things in common. There was it was there, they were they were in this this time of of protection. It was like they were in an incubation time, where they were they were growing and and being nourished. But then there came a time of persecution, and they were they were scattered in Jerusalem. And the and the time changed. See, we got to know the time, so you don't want to live in the time of persecution as if it was a time of peace. But you also don't want to live in a time of peace as if it's a time of persecution. We need to know the time. Amen. You know, there was, I think it was in Samuel's day, he said there was, uh, the, every, the word of God was precious. There was no open vision. See, that was different than other times. There was other times where the, the Lord, you know, in fact, in Samuel's day, he spoke several times to Samuel. And the, he, the word of God made things known during Samuel's day, but not, not every day was like this. The Holy Spirit is impressing upon us, know the time. In other words, don't be, don't live your life looking down at the dirt. Know the time. Know what's, Sister Nick, uh, Ms. Melissa. I was thinking about, when you uh, started out about sleeping, it's time, uh, time to awake. I was thinking about Matthew 25, 5 and 6, speaking about the wise and foolish virgins, and it said, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So I was thinking, now is that time. Sometimes you think about that scripture as being like when Jesus comes, you know, whenever he comes and gathers everyone. But I'm thinking, you know, like now is the time to awake and you're going forth. To, you've got to be ready to meet the bridegroom. So you've got to be awake and you've got to be ready because he's coming. Yeah, one of the specific examples of that is the difficulty that Jewish believers had with transitioning from the shadows under the law to the realities that exist in the day of salvation. Uh, Paul had to deal with that among Jews. That's what the book of Hebrews is all about. It's moving away from the shadow. There's a time when it would have been acceptable to keep those ceremonies and the, and the different things associated with that. But when the day of salvation had come, it was time for people to transition, especially Jews, to transition into the realities. And so that's part of knowing the time. That's what made that so pertinent to Paul, that they make that transition. Because you can't live in the day of salvation while trusting in all those shadowy things. Even Gentile churches were having difficulty with that. Galatians were having difficulty with circumcision because they were being pressured. See, and the same thing with the Colossians. They were being judged for not keeping new moons and Sabbaths and these things. And so, so, the, so you're right, it's very important to know the times and especially to know that we're living in the day of salvation where more has been made available than has been made available at other times. Yes. We've all talked about a time when there would be a great falling away. 
Paul didn't, he didn't affirm that that had happened in his day. There, there were uh, pockets of people or churches that have been drawn away. Brother Ricky just mentioned the Galatian church, that there, there, were, there was trouble. But Paul didn't say, we're living in a great falling away. But Paul did say there was coming a time when there would be a great falling away. But Paul also called, uh, talked about a time when the veil would be lifted from the Jews and there, it would be life from the dead. See, there's different, different times coming. So we, we need to know, know the time. But our text, I've I'm, I'm been speaking up to this point in, in general broad scope about all of eternity and all of time and the different dispensations of the covenants. But our text is talking to individuals. He's, ta he's making a personal, indi not only individual. Uh, you, you understand that we can, we can take this as a body as well. We can, we can receive this as a body as well. But this text is, is talking to individuals about knowing the time, that it's high time to awake out of sleep. Our salvation is nearer than when, when we believe. So think about it this way. I could have an evil day and you be strolling by in, in the green pastures and along quiet waters in the same day. And see, you, you need to know, knowing the time, that that you're in today and I have to be able to judge and know the time that that I'm I'm in and you see spiritually seasons can come and go uh, very quickly you may you may uh, as it were you may experience all four seasons in the same day spiritually it can happen very very quickly um, where things like that don't happen in in nature uh, in in the spirit nature can be can be like turned turned upside down and they those those things uh don't don't apply see the, the lord can uh, the lord gives the increase and he can give he can be giving you an increase during this this period of time while uh one somebody else is not receiving a time of increase and they're doing all that they can do is just stand yeah. having done all to stand you see, these things can be happening all at the same time. Uh, I mean, among um, a, a body of believers. And actually, actually, this is a mercy. Because we don't want to all be having an evil day all at the same time. We don't all want to be cast down but not destroyed all at the same time. That's one of the benefits of, of being in a body. Is you, can be, you can be cast down and you can be perplexed and that... 2 Corinthians 5 experience that Paul talked about. But when you come into the assembly, you don't want everybody in that condition. Because some, somebody else is going to be riding in the high places and they can help you in the, the places that you're at. And then sometime, sometime later, those, those, those times are going to reverse and you're going to be the one in the high places and somebody else is going to be, be uh, cast down. That's, that's one of the benefits of being in, in the body is that it, there's a fabric there's a fabric of strength uh, that we are being knit together in love. He says it's high time. Knowing the time. So there, there's, there's, there's a great commission. Knowing the time. Knowing the time that it's, it's high time uh, to awake out of sleep. That means you should have woke up yesterday. Yeah. That's what he's saying. It's high time. There's, a, there's always a note of urgency that comes from the spirit. It's high time to awake out of sleep. You, you can't find any note of, of, uh, of casual exhortation in the scripture. As, as in this, so the, Paul didn't say, uh, it'd be a good time to awake out of sleep when you get around to it. No, it's high time. It's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. It, that, it, that means it's past time to awake. It's past time to wake up. It means that however long, however long that it has been, maybe that you've been asleep, it's been too long. Yeah. It's high time to awake out of sleep. Peter put it this way, talking about the, uh, the time past. He says, the time past that you lived in the flesh, it suffices. That's right. It suffices. That means it's enough. That means that if you came to the Lord as, at a very young age, you didn't have, you, you don't have a, 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 a a past of you know years and years of living for the world and living for yourself you you want to rejoice in that 
But whatever, whatever time it was that you lived before you came to the Lord, it's enough. Brother Jeremy? Yeah, I, I just see this is showing how good our God is. He just doesn't allow us to just continue to live in sin. And, and he's warning us because He cares about us. Yes. Get ready. I mean, later on in this um, passage here, it talks about you know, not, not don't live un, unrighteously. Don't live, you know, to live holy and righteous because it's important. I mean, whether or not you understand how important it is for us to live righteous and not to live ungodly, just know that God's warning us here. And that when you're speaking, yeah. I was thinking of one of the only times that I ever in my life to remember that it was really high time for me to get up and go was when Nikki tried to wake me up for the tornado. I didn't know how close that tornado was, but I was sleeping. I was upstairs. Afterwards, the upstairs was gone. Yeah. Like it was in Indiana. And so I didn't realize how high, you know, how close it was time for me to get up. Well, yeah, uh -huh. we, the Lord's come back, back with wrath. And it is high time because we don't even know. We might not make it through this service That's right. before the Lord's come back with his wrath. Right. And we don't want to be on the side of the wrath. Uh -huh. I didn't want to be up in the upstairs when that tornado hit. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. I didn't know. Yes. But God's given us a clue. He's telling us. He's saying, now, get up. Let's get ready. Yeah. Amen. Did you say more than a clue? More yeah, than a clue. more than a clue. Yes. yes. Amen. Yeah, that's... Um, God's never late, and His grace, you know, he's, this is the time, we're living in a time when it's possible, it's possible for you to respond favorably to the gospel message, Amen. to come to Christ. The grace is available to do it. The grace Amen. is kind of like this tornado, this, it's coming your way. We don't want to miss our, the opportunity. It, grace is not guaranteed that, that you know, I, I, that it'll be there Forever. I mean, there came a time when God shut the door on yeah. Noah's day. There wasn't any, it wasn't going to be opened again. Somebody could beat on the door. It wasn't going to be open. We're living in a time of grace now. Right. A time when a, a proper response to God isn't only in, in order, it's demanded. Amen. It, every man, it's commanded every man to repent. Why? Because it's the right time. Now's the time to repent. Yeah. Now's the time to be sorry for what you've done. Well, so God will respond. In other words, if you if now if you repent, He'll respond favorably. That's the time. That, that's because it's the time. But, Amen. But if we let it pass, I I think I've uh, known people that I I've talked to for a long time, and they were very close, very close. I could tell that that there was an inclination, and in there was something in them that wanted it, but there was something else in them that they didn't want to give up. They, it wasn't. They didn't know the time. They right. didn't realize God was right there. And you know, and I lost contact with them. Maybe somebody else. You know, I, I don't know. But I think it's dangerous for people not to know the age they're living in. Yes. Amen. Yes, sister. Yeah, it's it, it's not that people know everything. Yeah. But uh -huh. it's not altogether mysterious either. Amen. Yes. When the, when something is provided or revealed then that's the time. Amen. We're, it's, it's said already, we're living in the day of salvation. Mm -hmm. So it's time for men to be saved. Yes. Right. It, 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 we live in a day whenever the Word of God is available to us. It's the time for us to know what it says. Amen. And to give ourselves to it. And so uh, when, whenever the time was that God gave no open revelation of himself it was a time to be watching and be making sure that you were ready so that when the time came you didn't miss it yeah. so there again we're learning to to think after the thoughts of god Amen. And, and every time there's something of god to be seen and known and so whatever time you're in you need to apply yourself to that that's exactly what I was thinking about in Ecclesiastes. Solomon wrote that there is a time to every purpose under heaven. That's right. So God has a purpose in every time, whether it be the, the high view of time, like the day of salvation, or whether it be the more specific view of the, 
the aspect you brought out about every person has a time mm -hmm. in every day. We have times and seasons in our own lives. But there's a purpose that the Lord is bringing to each of these times. And we don't want to just let time pass, so to speak, in those those opportunities. We want time to be accomplished. Remember there was the phrase that uh, the days were accomplished. That has to do with the purpose being fulfilled in that particular time. That's right. Yes. So the, it, this is a good view um, to have this urgency when it comes to the to the things of the Lord. That's high. It's high time. The past, the time past that you that you lived, according to this world, it's it's sufficient. It's enough. Let it. You need to forsake it now, brother Jonathan, and then the brother Marty. Kind of the tone of all of this, it's kind of like it's saying like there is really no good time to sleep, like in a sense that rather than all right. This is the time of sleep. That time's later. Like you might think of the flesh. Like, okay, when nighttime comes, we go to bed. But in, in this sense, like as far as like this high time you're talking about, there is no time to like shut down from that, so to speak. Yeah. Sleeping can be just like taking your mind off it or focusing on something lesser to where that's not even in your head. That That's where like that stirring up the pure mind, so to speak, like get it back in there, wake up, be more aware. So yeah, like that, like that scripture, it says like, we're not of the night. We don't don't sleep as others do. We're of the we're of the day. We stay awake. Those who are in the night, they sleep. So I mean, I like that. There there really is no good time to sleep. He's saying stay awake like permanently in this sense. Right. Yeah. I like uh, Ecclesiastes three as well. The one that gives me the most thought is where where the scripture tells us there's a time to keep and a time to cast away. And when you when you think on that, it, it seems like when that was written. They must have known about the coming of the Lord, the time to keep our diligence, to keep our faith, to cast away the old man, cast away our fears. It's a very encouraging set of uh, scriptures. Amen. Another aspect of this high time is that everything that, that needed to be accomplished for you to be saved is done. It's accomplished. So it's, it's, it's the right, it's right for God to save you. So, I mean, in that context, it would be wrong for you not to, to awake from your sleep. And, and to, that this time that's been set aside by God, from the, before the foundation of the world, there was going to be this time. You've already mentioned it. This time when God was going to be gathered. This is the time. It's the right time. Amen. So there's, uh, there is no good time to sleep in a fight. Like when, you know. When, when, how do you make that judgment? It, oh, this, this would be a good time while the bullets are flying and the, and the bombs are exploding. Uh, nap time. You know, it just does it, those things just don't, don't go together. Yeah, amen. But even, even while the... I, I found myself thinking about this comparison between physical and spiritual because he's... Obviously, sleep applies to the physical and applies to the spiritual. But the, while, even while the body is sleeping... Your spirit can still be alert. Amen. There are, the people of God have received uh, revelation from God in their sleep. It's called visions and dreams. Daniel received them. Joseph received them. Where God revealed something in, in their sleep. <clears throat> so, uh, but, um, so here he's not, he's not talking about taking of rest. I, I know everybody understands that. But just to button it down. He's not saying don't, don't, uh, don't fall asleep now while I'm talking to you. That's not good either, but that's not what Saul. That's not what Paul's saying. He's talking about the slumber of the heart. Right. He's talking about your ears going dull. That that's what he's talking about. That's the sleep here in this text. The sleep is when you're you're unaware and when you're vulnerable. Like Brother Jeremy's talking about, if Sister Nikki hadn't have woken him up, yes. then that day would have been different. Yes. Sleep is unaware and vulnerable. It's when you're not perceptive. It's when the eyes aren't watching and the ears aren't hearing. That's what sleep is. See, and that, that applies in the physical and it, it applies in the spiritual. Now, here's another comparison is that sleep is necessary in the natural. You just try to stay up for longer than 48 hours and see how, <laughs> see how good you operate. It doesn't work very well. Sleep in the natural is, is necessary, but sleep in the spiritual is lethal. Yes. Amen. You die. 
This is when you can be taken unaware. Jesus said, let no man take your crown. That, that's when things get taken from you, is when you're asleep. When you're dozing. When you're unaware. Uh, the book of Hebrews warns us about uh, not letting the things which we have heard slip from us. Don't, lest at any time they should slip. Give the more diligent heed to the things you've heard, lest at any time they slip. That means you lose, you lose what was given you. You forget what you received. Don't let them, don't let them slip. They, things slip when you fall asleep, when you doze, when, you're, when your heart becomes dull, when your ears close up, when your eyes become hazy. Talking about the eyes of your heart become hazy. You're going to lose something. Yeah. You, don't, you, you don't doze off spiritually and wake up having not lost something. Yeah. You lose something when you doze off in, in the spiritual. So the world could put you to sleep. You give, you know, something worldly catches your eye, catches your ear, catches something of your, your affection, and it starts to put you to sleep. And the, the devil puts you to sleep. You know, the devil knows how to, he, he has an arsenal that he can, uh, he can maximize his effectiveness. And so he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily come at you with, uh, with, with alarming, uh, alarming things at first. He, co he comes with things that, are, uh, that can like lull you to sleep. And then af after your senses are dull, then the heavier artillery starts to come in. Brother? have this awareness because there are there is an enemy that's tr like trying to take that away like waiting for waiting for a chance to do that i mean you have like a home invader they just break in regardless of what time it is he's there but a thief waits till either they're gone or either they're asleep and then you'll sneak in some way so the sleep that you're talking about like that's being brought in like but when you do that there's someone waiting there to get in at that moment so yeah i can see what you're saying like if you were to wake out of that you've lost something but that's the kind of the design of bringing the sleep in the first place is so so you, that can be taken away. So yeah, we have to have the perspective that if I do, I am going to lose something. Yeah. The false doctrine has, has this tendency as well. False doctrine doesn't come and say, Jesus is not the Son of God. Yeah. False doctrine doesn't come initially and say, there is no God. No, it false doctrine will deal with with the, the things the Scripture says and then, and then present uh, little things that that uh, introduce uh, it's, it's like an infiltration it's not it's not trying to stop a train head on it's a, the danger of sleep is that it can it, it's a slow work sleep can is like creep up on you so you don't you don't realize the, the danger that's on you you're as you're dozing your senses become become dull it's, that's the introduction to the real danger sleeping is dangerous but not not compared the real danger is coming what if you actually fall asleep so it's not sleeping is not like a sniper kill yeah. sleeping is like um, um well go ahead brother bob this is sleeping you know when you're sleeping you're inactive you're not really you're just laying there you're not doing anything and this this really uh is applicable to people who make a profession of faith but they're just not doing anything in the kingdom they're just sitting around they're saying well I, I i want that if that's true that i can be with god forever if i can get all this eternal life i want that but they haven't really engaged god i mean see, if, if you don't i know at work if i just sit, come in and sit down in a barrel and just looked around at the shop i wouldn't one i wouldn't get anything done and i'd get really sleepy it, it, i wouldn't be able to do that every day i couldn't be a security guard i'd fall asleep but see, this is inactivity in the kingdom of God is lethal. It will you have got to use what God's given you, or you'll fall into this kind of slumber. You, you, you'll be, in other words, you won't be able to know the time. You won't be able to sense when God's near. Right. And so this is so. Put your hand to the plow. No matter you say, well, I don't have anything. Yeah, you do have something. Everyone that is in Christ has something. It may seem small, but you use it, and it'll get a lot bigger. Yeah, I was thinking about this time too. We, so this this is our time now to repent. Yes. Right? To live righteous and holy. Yes. People don't realize there's going to become a time where there is no more time for that. Yes. Romans 2, 5 talks about the, the day of wrath. When that day comes, that's a different time. That's not going to be a time for people to repent because 
people are going to be calling for the rocks to come down on their heads. It's past time for right. repent. Amen. It's past time for righteous, living righteous and holy. They will, they will be cut off at that time. But now is the time to live righteous and holy. Now is the time to repent, be baptized, and come into the Lord and live for the Lord. Yeah. Go ahead. I was considering how there are things that in this world, there are things that people do that actually makes their bodies tired. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, I was considering how, well, a lot of people here have jobs that they go to and it physically wears them out, but they do them unto the Lord. And so that's sanctified when that when that happens. And then the rest, the Lord gives them the rest. It's, um, re it's a reward. The rest is. But... At the same time, if you are not being wise with uh, your time, mm -hmm. like say you have, like Brother Jeremy's job or somebody's, um, where you're doing something that could harm someone the next day. If you stay up all night wasting your time and you're exhausted the next day and you fall asleep, that could be very hazardous. Mm -hmm. And the Lord won't bless something like that. So I can, I can see how there are... Think it, time is a stewardship, obviously, and how the Lord is able to bless your rest when you've done it unto Him, and and then we want to we want to be wise with not wasting our energies so that we become tired for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. You want to wake <clears throat> awake out of sleep because. Uh, a, in a little bit of time, the devil can do a whole lot of damage. The devil doesn't need a lot of time to, to do work. Like, it, as men, we, we, we do need, we, we have to have a, a time of, a space of time, you know, to do. But in the spiritual, see, things can, things can happen very, very quickly. Just ask, ask Peter, as he's walking on the water, how long did it take to sink? You know, that, that you got to, you got to wake out of sleep with that in mind. Like, you're, uh, like you're walking on water in the storm and you gotta you gotta keep your eyes it fix your eyes on on jesus you look at the wind and you start or look at the waves and you start to sink it's high time to awake out of sleep and the, the devil didn't wait a long time before he started to uh, attack the church and he he hasn't stopped either uh bunyan in his uh pilgrim's progress uh, depicted, he saw in his dream that that uh, the pilgrim fell asleep, and when he when he fell asleep, his scroll that was that was his evidence. Remember, he said he had to have that evidence to get in at the gate when he arrived there. At the end of the journey, his his scroll fell, and he lost it. When he awoke, he didn't know that he'd lost something, so he continued on his journey, and it wasn't for some time till he realized he'd lost something when he fell asleep and then he had to go back to get it. You remember he said, now I've traveled this ground three times. Tried once forward, once back, and then a second time forward. And that happened because he fell asleep and he, he lost something. And that's, that was a, that's a perceptible, a perceptive um, remarks that the uh, Bunyan made. We always lose something. So you think of sleep like the weights Hebrews 12 says, lay aside every weight. Amen. Sleep is like a weight. And it's like even, even the physical sleep or your eyes go down. We say things like, well, my eyes are heavy. <laughs> sleep is like a weight. Yeah, th throw it off. Remember, Samson sh is shook himself. It was like his, his uh, attempt to garner his strength. He, he shook himself. And we even see people do that physically to stay awake. You know, you sh shake yourself to not succumb to, uh, to sleep. I think it's a mercy that there's so many... There's so many uh, parables in the in the natural uh, to the to these spiritual conditions. Don't don't fall asleep in your heart and in your spirit. Don't fall fall asleep. So now I want to look at uh, several different places in the scripture that talk about knowing the time, and um, and it, and they make they make personal applications. They speak to to individuals about about knowing the time and how it. Uh, affects our uh, walking, affects our spiritual walking. So in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says, Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. 
Now he's laying, he's, he's making a comparison here. He's laying things side by side to make comparisons. Let us not sleep, but let us watch and be sober. It means that you're not going to do any watching if you're sleeping. And you're not going to be thinking sober if you're, if you're sleeping. These things, you can't, you can't do those things while you're, while you're sleeping. Sleep is where, where things lie dormant. Things aren't happening when you, when you're asleep. So sleep is actually like like drunkenness is to the body, sleep is to the soul. That's right. It it you, your your faculties aren't operating when you're, you you fall asleep in your spirit and you're not you're not hearing, you're not seeing, you're not understanding, you're not, you're not perceiving, you're not reacting. Let us not sleep. <clears throat> it's actually it's alarming how how common it is in in uh, church and religious settings. Uh, for people to be be content to not understand that's right. That's right. this is actually dangerous this is actually alarming yes. the the word the seed that was sown that landed on the path that that the word that wasn't understood that's the seed that was taken away it was stolen away by the birds see so let us not sleep as do others the, we can be uh, aware of and we can be discerning of the day that we're living in. That's watch and be sober. We can get it. We can, we can perceive it. We can see what is going on, what the Lord has done. We can see the opportunity that we have living, living by faith in the day of salvation. We can, we can see what is available to us. And you've got to see it before you're going to go for it. I mean, uh, pressing forward happens when somebody sees something. Why? Why, are, why is somebody not pressing forward? They don't see anything to go get. Yeah, right. So let us watch yes. and, and be, be sober. Too much is at stake to be asleep, brethren. Amen. There's too much at stake. That's right. Not knowing the time. Yes. Not knowing the time. Me, sister, go ahead. Sleep in the spirit, and knowing the time, and I thought about this how you had brought out about individuals. And that's really good because you think about different circumstances you have in your life. Sometimes there's a time whenever you could be burdened down with care, but if you discern the time, then you can be awake and you can trust in the Lord. So there's all, and, and also I was thinking how the Lord gives us all the brethren, and different brethren go through different things, and we watch. They do this, and so they give us things to, to help us stay awake. Yeah, As we see yeah. them, and and we say they're staying awake, we can we get those yeah. that those things to use too to help yeah. us, kind of like an alarm clock, you know, to keep us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking of the uh, analogy. Now, if you would, if you somebody your doctor say said you need to have a sleep study to see whether or not you have this condition, so he sends you to a sleep study room. Now, when you get there, you wouldn't be expecting like a marching band to be, you know, because I mean, it doesn't, it, you're supposed to be sleeping. So that they have set the, the mood in the room for the optimal to where you'll, you're going to be able to go to sleep. But you wouldn't want that same environment to be like in the operating room or something. You, you wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want your surgeon to fall asleep in the middle of the operation and cut a main artery and you die because of it. But see, this, I, I, what you just brought up is very critical. There are some environments, I'm talking church environments, that are more conducive to spiritual sleeping yeah. than spiritual That's right. watching. That's right. Yep. You want to watch and be sober so that you know the day of your visitation. Remember, Jerusalem missed it. They, Jesus was actually the one they were waiting for. They, or they should have been waiting for. He, Jesus was the one that had been promised, and they missed it. They didn't know the day of their visitation. Now, some, some people got it. Aunt Anna, she saw it. Um, Simeon, he saw the Lord's salvation. There were other people in Jerusalem waiting for salvation. There were, but lar largely, Jerusalem missed it. That's why Jesus wept over the city. He says, I would have gathered you, and you would not. They missed the day of their visitation. They, didn't, they weren't watching and they weren't they weren't sober. The scripture says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. It's like they were they were asleep. Actually, Nineveh is was going to rise up. They just said that Nineveh is going to rise up with this generation and condemn it because Nineveh was more awake than Jerusalem, and Nineveh didn't get the the kind of message that Jerusalem got. Jerusalem 
had the Son of God preaching, the kingdom of God is among you. That's the, that's the message that Jerusalem got, and they missed it. Nineveh got this message, 40 days and you're going to be destroyed. And they repented. I mean, think about that. They, had to, they didn't repent at a gospel. They repented at a message of, of destruction. Jonah, Jonah didn't say, but if you repent, then the Lord won't do it. He just said, 40 days and you're gone. And they repented just for the possibility that they would be spared. And Nineveh, see, it's like Nineveh was awake. They were woke up by the, the message that they heard. It's like they knew the time. They even put sackcloth on their animals. They were serious in their repenting. They knew the time. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says, I... I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I reckon, a reckoning is a, is, is a, is a term of judgment. I, this is, I judge this. This is, I, I, um, this is the conclusion. I, I reckon that the present time, the present sufferings are worth it because the glory that shall be revealed in us is so much greater, is so much better that you're going to have no regret for enduring through this present time. So Paul's saying this is an expression of knowing, knowing the time and being awake. So Paul didn't run, he didn't run from suffering. He didn't cry um, and try to uh, avoid the suffering. suffering. He, knew, he knew the time, this present time. Now thankfully, uh, the present time is not, is not only suffering. But we have to be able to make... A, we have to be able to reckon on the present time. Whatever it is, whatever kind of season that you're in, you've got to be able to reckon and make a righteous judgment about the, the present time. So, the pre see, the present will not always be. It's not always going to be whatever, whatever season or whatever meadow or whatever valley you're in now, you're not always going to be in that in the present time. Yeah. Saul... Or, or Paul the Apostle had a lot of sufferings, but he didn't, he didn't suffer continuously. It, there, were, there, was, there was mercy uh, mixed, mixed in it. So see, this present time has to be judged with the future time in mind. You've got to be able to see the glory that will come when you're considering this present time. The present time has the ability to, to, to burden you down and, and knock you down and, and drag you down because of the, the, the nature of, of the world. But it, you, can, you want to judge this present time. I reckon this, that the sufferings of this present time, it's the, the future time that enabled him to make that reckoning. So see, he knew the time. So sanct faith can sanctify every experience. See, we, uh, think about the different experiences that Paul had. He, when he said, we are... Um, we are perplexed, but not in despair. I mean, he, he had perplexing experiences. He had days that we, most of us, if not all of us, can't say, oh yeah, I've had that kind of day. Not like Paul. I mean, he, he spent a day and a night in the deep. That means that's, he was shipwrecked and he, he floated in the sea for a day and the night before he was rescued. I mean, none of us have had that, that kind of experience. But he, he was able to to, to know the time. He's able to make, make a, a judgment. And faith can sanctify the experience. You, you experience it. You handle it by faith. You live by faith. And then you, you'll be able to make this kind of judgment. I reckon the, the sufferings of this present time, not, they're not worthy. Paul said in, uh, to the Corinthians, I believe, he said the, these momentary light afflictions work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. See, they're, they're not going to look momentary and light without this view of the glory that is to come. They're going to they're gonna look heavy unless you can see the, the time to come. So we gotta, we've got to know the time to be able to make this, this kind of judgment. Those sufferings are not because you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's not just, oh, you know. In other words, sufferings aren't pointless. You got to be able to make this judgment. Sufferings are going to be real, real, real hard on you if you think that sufferings are pointless. So the the Lord is working. The Lord is working in this present time. The sufferings of this present time. And the sufferings also don't come because the the devil outmaneuvered you, and the devil got the best of you. 
he can't, Brother James mentioned this morning, the devil can't, can't do the, do the, make the slightest advance without being given, given an allowance from heaven. He's got, he's, got to, he's got to apply for every work he wants to do. He's got to get a, he's got to get a hall pass for every, everything, every move that he makes. He's got to get a pass uh, to, to do it. So by faith, see, we can see the link between this present time and the time that is to come. Faith will link the, the future time, the time that is to come, with this, with this present time. And brethren, you've got, you've got to be able to make this link. Otherwise, this, this present time, you're not going to be able to know the time. You're not going to be able to judge. You're not going to be able to reckon by faith, like, this, like Paul says here. You've got to be able to reckon. Sufferings in present time, are they're not worthy to be compared. Knowing the time. So actually, as you live by faith, actually, eternity has already commenced. Eternity has already commenced as you live by faith because this present time is working for you a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. See, that, that enables you to, to, to endure, to, to link this present time with the, the time. What a mercy that the Lord has opened these things up to us. Just imagine, uh, trials are hard enough. Just imagine if the Lord didn't open up these things to us and let us see the reason for the trial. That the, tr the trial is, is taking something out of you that shouldn't be there. That the trial is actually delivering you, is delivering us from something. It's like a purging. Just imagine if the Lord hadn't revealed that to us. We can know the, we can know the time. Here's another thing to consider in knowing the time. Is our, is our time past? Galatians, Paul mentioned a lot. Uh, at least several times he, he mentioned his time past. And he said this in Galatians 1.13, For you've heard of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. And there were several times when he went back, he mentioned what he used to be. As he knew, he knew the time. So I want to I exhort you in this, this matter as well, that we have to remember our time past with, with sobriety. And with, uh, with an element of shame as well. Have you ever heard? You ever heard somebody talk about their past, almost like they're proud of it? Yeah. This, this should be rebuked. It's almost like almost like boasting, talking about what I did, what I is. It's like the time past needs to be, if it is mentioned, it needs to be brief, and it needs to be mentioned with thankfulness to the Lord and with shame yeah. that it's past. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> The past actually can serve to, to fuel your zeal if you remember it by faith. You want to remember, you want to remember the past by, by faith. See, the, the devil will, remember, will remind you of your past, but he doesn't, he doesn't remind you of your past to, to, uh, to try to make you thankful that it's past. He's reminding you of your past to drag you into it, to drag you back to it. But Paul, Paul never, he, he never remembered it this way. The enemy is the accuser, and he can certainly he can certainly accuse me of something that I really did. You know, the people had to lie about Jesus to accuse him of something. They had to trump something up. Well, the devil doesn't have to lie about Aaron. He can accuse me of something that I really did. And I, I have a suspicion that he can probably do the same with you, too. He doesn't have to lie. He doesn't have to trump something up. He can accuse of something. That, but see, you got you got to encounter this by faith, knowing knowing the time that that time is past yes. and that's not that that's that's been that's been taken away that that has been removed from me as far as the east is from the west you see how this applies to knowing knowing the time that the time past is 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 gone so there's grace to think think soberly about the past one you don't want to live in the past i've i've known people um, like this that they in their old in their uh, older years they act as though their younger years were the gold was the golden age and that they wish they could go back that don't live like this That's right. don't live as if your teenage years or your 20 year your 20 somethings was the golden age of your life that's not the way faith works right. you remember you want to remember your past with the lord and that that'll sanctify the the remembrance of it. Yeah. And see, in the kingdom, everything is advancing. Everything is advancing forward. Yeah. So you you don't want to view the time past as like, oh, those those were the good old days. That that's not the way faith works. But you also don't want to forget about the past. Yeah. 
See, faith, faith can handle these things, sister. Growing, when you look back in the past, you can see how far you've come. You don't want to go back that way. Yeah, so you keep growing and going forward. Amen. Right. Amen. Uh, you know, the Lord is talking about that's actually more like a viewpoint of your flesh. Because if you are, you know, you're born again, you're living in Christ now, then that that was a time when the flesh was more prominent. So the flesh kind of talks that way. Those were the good old days because it had more expression, it had more freedom, but for, the, for, for like the new you, though, that's not something we take, that's not something we're glad about. Faith actually progresses, and you're better off as you continue in it. So, yeah, you look at the present time, you should be stronger than you are then. But, yeah, that's kind of like a fleshly view. Like, I was better then than I am now. Yeah, yeah but you all, we also don't want to forget the past. Paul, Paul was very, he's very keen about, about his past. And it... Hit, the Lord's forgiveness is what is what made him made him think this way. So we got to know know the time, and uh, when we think about the past, think about it with the Lord. Yeah. Here's another aspect that is a a wonderful provision for us in the kingdom of of knowing the time. It's found in Ephesians five sixteen, and it says, "Redeeming the time because the days are evil." Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now. I I um, I have a uh, I have reason to think that each one of us has something in our past that we wish wasn't there. Yeah. Probably a lot. We can redeem the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. That means we can we can live unto the Lord in such a way. Now the Lord he he's he's forgiven and he's washed us from our sins, but. There, there's this there's this memory there's this there's this shame about it we can redeem the time that is we can live for the lord with greater zeal than we ever lived for the world yeah. we can live for the lord with greater zeal than we ever lived for ourselves that that's what redeeming the time is is all about redeeming has to do with with buying up it's like re, it's recovering something yeah. it's recovering it so it's not it's not wasted there's grace to revenge our disobedience. Remember Paul said, to, I think it was the Corinthians, he says, in all readiness to revenge the days of your, of your disobedience. See, as we, the closer we become to the Lord, the less tolerant we become of the, uh, of the, way, the ways of the flesh and of the, of the, 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 things, the things in us, you know, the, the, the flesh that's in us. Revenging or avenging the days of our disobedience. You remember King Josiah, when the, the, during his days that they uh, they were uh, fixing the the temple and re uh, renewing renewing the the temple, and they found the book of the Lord, and it's like they, you know, had been had been forgotten, and so they Josiah read it and realized how far that they had drifted. Uh, from the law and from from the Lord, and he set out to redeem the time. And boy, boy, did he! He he took down groves and he took down high places. He yeah. took down idols, and and was he was avenging disobedience even back further than what what technically could have been accounted to him. He went back further than that. That's how that's how zeal, how uh, zealous he was. Amen. He even dug up bones of these of the. Pre, the men that were priests of idols, he dug up their bones and burned their bones. That's it. He was he was avenging. He was avenging the days of disobedience. Remember in Ephesus is where they they burned the books of curious arts. That, that's another example of that. There, it's not like they sold them. You know they didn't take their their books of sorcery and 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 sell them. You know to make a profit on them. They they burned them. That's avenging the days of. That's redeeming the time. Redeem, call upon the Lord while he is near. That's redeeming the time. Don't lose. Don't waste the opportunity. When the Lord is near, call upon him. Like the blind men, when Jesus passed by, the blind men were calling out to him and people were telling him to stop and they wouldn't give, they wouldn't let that opportunity go. They called out to the Lord and they, they got, they got what they, what they asked, what they asked for. Zacchaeus, um, he redeemed the time. When the, he not only did he receive the Lord into his house, 
And Jesus said, so today salvation has come to this house. Not only did he receive him, but he restored fourfold his bad business from the past. That's redeeming the time. He didn't just give them back, said, I, you know, I overcharged you. I took this, this really, fourfold. <laughs> Nobody told him to do that. He was redeeming the time. He was avenging the days of his disobedience. Zacchaeus made a righteous judgment. He knew the time, and he, he did that to the Lord. In writing to the, the brethren at Ephesus, Paul says, let him that stole steal no more. But not only that, he exhorted them to avenge the days of disobedience. He says, but rather, let him work and give to him that has need. You see the change that he's invoking? He says, let him that took not take, let him become a giver. Let the stealer become a giver. That's avenging. That's redeeming the time. Yeah. Avenging the days of disobedience. Go ahead. Which means redeeming is going to cost you something. Yeah. That's true. Right. And some yeah. kind of a price tag. Yes. In other words, it's going to require an intentional effort, extended effort, and sacrifice. And if that doesn't happen, you will not be able to redeem the time. Yeah. Good thought. Knowing the time. See, isn't that a wonderful provision that we can, we we can actually redeem the time that we that we wasted, that we, you know, from one perspective, there's nothing we can do about our past. It's gone. We can't turn the clock back. Only the Lord can, can forgive sin. But then here's this provision of redeeming the time, of avenging the days of our disobedience. That, that, is, a, that is a wonderful provision that the Lord gives us in, in the kingdom. Here's another word from Peter in first chapter, uh, first Peter chapter 4. He says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Now I want to highlight how he says the rest of his time, the rest of your time, now, you know, from the ultimate perspective, the time, the life that's been given us belongs to him. He's given us, we, we have nothing that we haven't received. But here he says the rest of his time, the rest, the rest of your time. He, make, he makes you the owner of it. Actually, he makes you the steward of it. Not, not, not the owner as in you can do what you want. But he, we are stewards of the time that we are given, that he no longer should live the rest of his time. Well, you want to you want to know the, the time that you've been given. The rest of his time. Don't don't spend it for the lust of the flesh, but but to the will of God. So we're, we've received this time, your time. We've received this time from the Lord, and then we're going to give an account for every deed done in the body. Yeah. So every, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna have to answer for what we did with this time, his time. Your time. You're going to give an answer for it. No one else can handle your time. No one else can handle my time. It's, it's a time that's been given to me. So I, I can't point the finger and say, well, he or they or them or... No, it's my time. It's been given to me. And I'm going to give an answer to, to the Lord. So those servants that were given the, the, uh, the talents, they had to give them back. They, they, they worked with them. They, they really entered into the work. But they, they had to give them back. And that we're going we're gonna to give our time back to the Lord. Whatever, what, what we did with it, we're going we're gonna to give it back. We're going to give an answer. Now, none of us know how long the rest of our time is. We're not given, uh, we're, we're not, we're not given this revelation. Now, you know, Paul said the time of my departure is at hand. He, you know, he had a he had an inclination to it, but he didn't he didn't know the time, the rest of his the rest of his time. Now, this can be a torment to the natural man, not not knowing the time. You, know, you to to people without hope, you tell them, you know, you could die today. Yeah. And they they don't rejoice in that. That's not comforting. Oh, I could die today. But now you now you in you you put hope in people, you put faith in people, and not knowing the time actually is a source of joy. Yeah. I, I don't know how much time I have. That means every day that you wake up, you can pray, Lord, this may be the last day that you give me. You can actually be comforted in that. You can actually can be. As you're living to the Lord, that can be that can be like an 
invigorating. Obviously, you, you got to have you got to have confidence and assurance in in, in the faith. To, to but you, you want you want to live that way. <clears throat> Past the time of your sojourning, knowing that this could be your 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 last day, knowing the time. Hebrews chapter four verse sixteen talks about finding grace to help in time of need. There, let us come boldly to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Go ahead. I think there is a very close relationship between redeeming time and how you wasted time in the past. Yeah. For example, the scripture says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So see, when you wasted time, you were filled with what made you unprofitable. And so now you fill yourself now with something that makes you profitable. Another example is with Paul. Paul was wreaking havoc on the church. But how he redeemed time is by being one of the greatest helps of the church. I think that's part of what fueled Paul's faithfulness. Is he was going to show himself to be absolutely clear in that matter by doing just the opposite of what he did when he was wasting time. See, and so we can we can do the same thing. You can you can look at your past as a part fuel for what you're doing presently by saying, now this is what I did in, in the time in which I was ashamed. So now I'm going to do just the opposite of that. You see, in order to show myself clear on that matter and to show what the grace of God has done. See, so I think there is that a close relationship between those two things. Yeah, he's talking about revenging the days of your disobedience. There's a correlation there. What you referenced the the ones that the Lord left his goods to and he was gone for a time. What he received was the fruit of what they did during that time. And that's what, what we're offering back to. We've been given the stewardship of time. Now what did you do with that time? What will you give the Lord? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Amen. So this Hebrews 4 text of uh, the time of need. Every not not every day is is uh, is the same. I mean, it shouldn't. This should be pretty obvious. There are day. There's a time of need, and then there are there are other days as well. Now it's not that we have days where we don't need anything from the Lord. That's <laughs> not what I'm saying. I'm talking about a day where the need is intense. The need is is greater than than other other days. Find grace to help in in time of need. <clears throat> so the scripture talks about the evil day, stand in the in the evil day. Well, thank the Lord that not every day is an evil day. There are days of need, times of need, and there are evil days. But then there are also good days. Peter talked about he that would love life and see good days. See, not not every day is the same. And I'm I'm thankful that that the Lord has made life like this. Now, maybe you've had a time, maybe you haven't. Maybe you've had a time where you, you fasted and prayed, but you, there never was a time where you, you decided, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to fast and pray. There was, a, there was a, a need that drove you to that, where you fasted and prayed. But you, you weren't thinking, I'm going to have to fast and pray to get through this. But you ended up, you were fasting and you were praying. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about, being a time of need. There's grace to help in time of need. So the time of need just makes you think different than normal. It's like being in a time of war. You don't, you don't think the same on the battlefield as you do at, at home in comfort. There's, these are different times. And you, you, gotta, you, you, have to have, you have to have faith and perception to know this time of need. There's grace to help in time of need. There was a time that Moses told the, uh, the Lord told Moses, you've compassed about this mountain long enough. Move on. Is it, that, that was the time was changing. Move on. There's a time of need. There was a time that Jesus slept through the storm and the time he walked on the storm. Yeah, that's right. Different times. There was a time in the Gospels that it says that the, the power of the Lord was present to heal. There were times Jesus healed a lot. But there was a time the Holy Spirit noted, 
the power of the Lord was present to heal. It says there was a, that was a different time. See, there's, there's times that have to be perceived it, to know, know the time. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I think I'll make this the last one. Just conclude with this. 1 Corinthians 7, 29. It says, But this I say, brethren, that the time is short. I guess that's appropriate to end on. The time, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be, though they had none. In, so in general, in, 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 on the general scope of things, the time is short. The time's been short from the beginning. In a little time, our generation will be gone. It's just a little time. It's not going to take a long time. And our, our generation will be gone. Just a little time. In fact, in just a little time, this world will be gone. That's a good perspective to have. You've got you to have faith to see this. Just a little time. He that in a little while, the scripture says, he that shall come will come and will not delay. It's going to happen in just a, just a little while. Thinking that you have a long time is bad thinking. This is dangerous thinking. It's just a little time. The time is short. Thinking that he had a long time is when those wicked servants began to live wickedly. Yeah. Beat other servants and and do, do other, and then the then the master shows up and he was he was unaware because he wasn't watching. He wasn't wasn't diligent. He only had a little bit of time, but he's thinking he had a long time. And then the, the that farmer, the goodman of the house, he brought in a big uh, big harvest one year and, and he started thinking bad. He thought, oh I've got it, I've got stuff stored up for years. I'm gonna I'm gonna take some time off. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a sabbatical. I sit back and just enjoy all this. Well his life was required of him that night. He thought he had a long time and he only had a little time. The time was short. Knowing that the time is short can actually d deliver you from distractions. Distractions that otherwise are would, would, be, would be strong and would be things that you... Um, see, if you think you've got a long time, then there are things can get at you that, if you that otherwise wouldn't have access to you. You know that the time is short. You can actually, you can actually circumvent a lot of distractions and weights that they just can't even they can't even get on you because you know the time is short. That's it. That, that's how you want to live unto the Lord, knowing that the time is short. So when the when the soldier you know is is headed out to the to the battlefield, you know he's not he's not taking like a like the the cup like the the cake pans and the coffee maker. He doesn't take that with him. He thinks different. <laughs> he knows that the the time is for battle. And so he, he takes he takes what is necessary to protect himself. He takes what's necessary to overcome the enemy. Yes. He takes what's necessary to survive. Amen. As he thinks he thinks in this, this critical way. The time is short. We've got to think that way, brethren. Know the time, that the time is short. So knowing the time can make it, it'll make you think quick and it'll make you think sharp. You know, when, if you're if you're found in in a jail, uh, stocked up and chained, and you've been praying and you've been singing, and then there's an earthquake, and the jailer comes in to kill himself, you don't want to think. I wonder if it's the Lord's will if we say something to him, or if we Silas, we should we should pray about this. Paul was quick, spoke to him, and and he was baptized and believed the gospel rather than killing himself. If Paul was was slow to that matter, then the jailer would have been dead. Yeah, that's right. He was quick. He knew the time was short, uh -huh. and he was able to uh, he was able to to answer. See, Nehemiah wasn't he wasn't taken away from his work on the wall. Right. He was he knew that the time was short. He worked as if the time the time was short. And Joseph wasn't drug away with the temptations of the of the woman. He wasn't drug away, but he, did, he was thinking like the time was short. And Daniel wasn't blindsided by all these demands of the king, of the diets and the, the, the uh, interpretation of the, of the dreams. He wasn't blindsided by any of this. He lived unto the Lord. So he, he thought in, the, in this way that the time, the time is short. Well, brethren, I want you to, I want you to know that the, the time is short. And I want you to know the time. 
that it's high time to awake out of sleep. And I'm glad Sister Melissa read that, that text about the, the ten virgins. All those virgins fell asleep. They all fell asleep. But when they awoke, see, some had extra. Some had extra. And they trimmed their lights and they were, they were uh, ready, ready to go in. So I exhort you to know, know the time. See, our, brethren, our, our whole life is, is um, uh, referred to as a vapor. It's a, just a vapor, like the steam coming off the, off the, the mug of, of drink, of, of hot, you know, the, just the steam coming off. That's what our whole life is like. It's just a, just a vapor. It's here one day and, and gone the next. So take comfort in that and know, know the time. Brother? Yeah, I can see how this would comfort us in the spirit. Now, in the flesh, that's, time is short is not much of a comfort because that's when everything they love ends here. Right. That stuff's not crossing over, so I can see that, but... When you hear something like when like you're suffering for his name's sake, okay, that's a good time to hear like time is short. Uh -huh. Or fighting the good fight of faith, time is short. Or like facing temptation or like seeing through the glass darkly, time is short. So I mean that's it's good to hear that kind of stuff when you're when you focus on what we have to endure in this world in order to get the glory. And time is short, so just endure for just a little while longer and you'll make it. So yeah, it's a mercy that God's given us a short time to have to do this. There is a different. Well, there's also a different way to sleep. It it says in First Thessalonians 4:14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so even so, them also which sleep in, in Jesus will God bring with them. So we need to die with Jesus. Exactly right. That sleep is talking about death. Sister Katie? Um, I was picturing this falling asleep in the spirit, and I was considering when you come into Christ, you Satan has put a target on your back. And then when you start to fall asleep, your armor starts to slip off, and you are allowing Satan to access that target, um, which then causes you to not be able to come out of it. So you just have to keep your armor on. I was just picturing the armor slipping off. Or you're falling asleep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, brother. Brother James. Yeah. I was thinking about how when it talked about awaking, awake out of sleep, that you're awaking to something or to yes. do something. Yes. You know, not just to open up your eyes, but to, to do something. And I was thinking of this text in about. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 34, where it said, Awake to righteousness and sin not. Yes, yes. You know, and, uh, so I was, I was considering that awakening, that you're awaking with action in mind. Yeah, amen. All right, we'll close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word and for the, the power that's in it, uh, for the light that's in it that shines uh, into our path and also into our heart. We pray. You would give us grace, Lord, to give more earnest heed to the to your word and to, to love it and to let it dwell in us richly and that we would receive it, um, the engrafted word that is able to save our souls. Uh, we pray, Lord, you would give us grace to, uh, to know the time and to awake out of sleep, to be uh, vigilant and to be alert and to be awake and to be watching for him who is coming again. We thank you for your promises. And we thank you for the provisions uh, that you have given us for, uh, for being awake. And we also thank you for this food that you provided and pray that you would bless it and those who have prepared it. And we pray that you would bless our fellowship uh, around the food and also for the rest of the day. In Jesus' name, amen.